Wassalam, that is, I give openness and witness that nothing is worthy of worship except Allah. He is one alone with our partners and associates. And I also give openness and witness that Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his slave servant messenger and seal of the prophets. Peace be upon the prophet, upon the descendants, upon his companions, and upon the righteous throughout the world. And peace be unto you. As-salam alaykum. We are forever thankful to Allah, highly glorified and for allowing us to unite for Jummah. And we, be, we, we begin with, with his name and we, we highlight, you know, his, his mercy to us. It's very, very important that we begin everything we do with these powerful attributes. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. That he has been so kind and caring and giving to us. You know, this, is, this is what the mercy is. He, he relieves us. Make things easy for us. And this is very, very important that we highlight why it's so significant for us to begin with his name. We don't begin in our name. We don't begin with any other purpose. We begin with Allah's name so Allah can, so that he can guide us through. He can guide us through. He can give us the aid. And we give him the highest respect and the most praise. And when we give this greeting of as salamu alaykum, it's very important for us to understand what that means for us. That it is a constant reminder of what we are about. You know, sometimes people think about this ideal of peace in terms of passivity. You know, peaceful people, humble people, not really involved in engaging change. When we talk about this piece, we're just really talking about the kind of discipline that's needed to grow life. Because where there's no discipline, you can't grow life. That's why Allah tells us when we talk about Hajj, it said, turn your face towards the sacred mountains. And what's so significant about that is, it's the principle of direction. See, without direction, you make no progress. He says, so you turn your face. Here's the direction. We talk about Kibla every time we make so that we have a we have an orientation, we have a focus, because that's where your power lies. So your power is in your focus. If you have scattered thoughts, there's no power. If your life is all over the place, disorganized and cluttered, there's no power. Your power is realized. Through focus, that's why Allah said, "Turn your face, turn your attention." You got to get some direction in your life. That's why Muhammad, the Prophet of Allah, says of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, "Didn't we find you wandering, and we gave you guidance?" Just imagine in the world how many people are just wandering aimlessly, aimlessly through life, no focus, no direction. They lack power, and because they lack focus and direction, they're not able to achieve what they really have the capacity to achieve because they have no focus and they have no direction. And that's why we emphasize this idea of guidance, how man needs guidance because Allah said first of all that he created everything, then he gave it guidance. He don't just will a thing into creation without any guidance. He gave us a conscience. That conscience reminds us if it's right or wrong. He said that he breathed of his spirit. He said he also created the human being, then he gave him the distinction between that which is right and that which is wrong. He already had the morality in his body. That's why a little child goes and sleeps because the child knows that's not right. The little child who's not even really aware of what's going on in the world knows that that behavior of you going into the cookie jar without permission, you know that's not right. Allah already put that in your being. So he said that he creates and then he gives a thing guidance. Then he also says he creates, give a guidance, then he gives a destiny. That all of us is on this journey called life and we're moving towards our destiny and as we move towards our destiny we need guidance. Without guidance we have no Direction, we're just wandering, wandering aimlessly through life. And when you're wandering aimlessly through our life, you do not know where you may end up at. 
So Allah said to Muhammad, the prophet, Islam, himself, did we not find you wandering and gave you guidance? Here's a man already willed to be the messenger of Allah, but Allah said, we found you wandering. You didn't know where you was going, Muhammad. You had no focus in your life. Mother died, father died. You don't know where your focus is. So he was already created and it was destined for him to be the messenger of Allah, for him to be the last prophet. And Allah said, with all of that, we had to give you guidance. Now if Allah had to give guidance to the man that he destined to be his last prophet and his messenger, don't you know Allah has to give us guidance? He created us, and he gave us God, and he gave us the revealed scripture called Quran that came through Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we start talking about guidance, we talk about hadith, Allah is al-hadith, masjid al-hadith, we talk about guidance for a better life. When we submit our will to the law and do the work of Allah, then we're moving towards a better life. Life. That's what the human being needs. The human being needs exposure to a better life. And the way we experience a better life is as we follow the will of Allah. Of Allah we will move towards living a better life. We talked last time. We were talking about this verse. We clearly said, Who a lady... It is he who created the human being from one soul. That's one of the verses we've been talking about. He created the human being from one soul. And that's why the Hajj was so significant because Hajj showed the expression of that one soul. When you start dealing with a human being. See, if we're going to have a better life, we have to first get the proper perception of a human being. That's why there's so much disrespect for human life because people do not have the proper perception of the sacredness of human life. And the reason why there's a lack of a no respect for human life because most people have lost the concept of what it means to be a human being. Here's a thinking being. Here's a strategizing, a planning being. A being who is moving towards future. Not just working for the day. You're working for the future. Because you know what you do today is going to eventually lead towards your future. So you're working for tomorrow. You're not just consumed with the day. But you realize you're going to put as much work in today as you can. But Muhammad the Prophet said, he said that live today as though it's your last, but also live as though you will live forever. You got to work hard today, and then you have to work hard for the future. And if we're to have a better future, we need guidance for that one soul. So how he demonstrated this picture of the human family at the Kaaba, which means to join and to connect. Allah says that Hajj is a duty that man owes to Allah. And when you understand the kind of impact Hajj has on your spirit, how Hajj has on your mind, the commitment, the sacrifice, the drive, the determination to make it to destiny, when we say Allah created everything and he gave it a destiny, when you make that journey your destiny of all things is to make it to Arafat. The climax of the high is to make it to one place where that human family congregated all at one time. See, oneness is so important. There's so much separation. And with all this separation, you never realize real power. The real power is when you understand this one soul, Manasseh White, this one soul means here's the human being 
who is by nature a connecting being. By virtue of the fact that Allah made you human, you bond with another human being, naturally. But shaitan works to create separation, and when you have separation, you lose your power. That's why Allah said, turn your attention toward the sacred mouth. Turn your attention, get your focus, get your direction, because that's where your power lies. Your power lies in your focus. If you have scattered thoughts, if your mind is all over the place, you have no power. Person talking to you, your mind all, come on, get, get focused. They tell you get focused because you're not even hearing what they said. You, you hear the word, but you're not listening because you have no focus. Your mind is all over the place. And I want you to realize your power is in your focus. So when we make this, we make this movement towards, towards Kibla in this direction, that's our power. All over the world. People turn in that same direction. That's power. So Allah says he creates, and then he gives a thing guidance. All throughout the Quran, Allah talks about guidance, huda. And we said that huda and hadi, Allah the guidance, is guidance for a better life. I don't care what you've been through, what you're going through, how you're living, you want a better life. And that's why even those who achieve, they want more. They want to see what else can I accomplish. I want a better life. Because there's a sense of satisfaction that comes from achieving. You remember before we talked in the verse where Allah tells you, do not, he says, seek the means of the hereafter. But do not neglect your share of the dunya. But do good. As the law has been good to you. We're talking about a good life. A good life. And seek not missions in the land for Allah love not those who do missions. Allah says, and when you get yours, and you should get yours. All Allah says, do good as he has been good to you. That's powerful right here. When you think of all that Allah has done for you, all Allah says is do good. Reminding us he has already been good to you. Now if he has been good to you, it's only intelligent that you begin to be good to other people. And when you're being good to other people, you're sharing, you're giving, you experience a good life. Talking about getting high, that's how you really, really get high. You don't get high from drugs. You get high from doing good. In other words, doing good does something to lift up your spirit. That's getting high. Drugs zap life out your body. And if you take a prescription from the doctor, that drug is zapping life out your body. Even though you need it, it helps you to live a better quality life, but it's zapping energy and life out your body with all of the signs. That's how people usually get high. They get high of drugs. And many of those drugs have been manufactured by pharmaceutical companies. That's why people are ODing every day. Because they've been under, under this illusion that they're going to get high, but the substance is damaging their body. So if you really, really want to get high, Allah says, here's what you do. Do good as the law has been good to you. When you start doing good, you help people, and you see how what you're doing help to change lives, that's a high for you. Because it should do something for your spirit. All throughout the crown, Allah says, help the engineer, help the poor, help the orphan, help the needy. That's going to elevate our spirit. We're going to be in a higher state of consciousness. We begin to evolve more spiritually. So Allah says, and do good as Allah has been good to you. So we see Allah is our hadith, he's the guidance. But he's also our mumin. He's the believer. Now, I mentioned before, I said, think about that. I'm a believer, 
Allah is the believer. He is the creator. We said before time and time again about this verse where Allah says, it is he who has created everything in the earth for you. He creates a thing and he put life and potential in that created form. And when he creates something, he gives an assignment and a purpose in life for its existence. When he created the sun, it's not out of a whim. It has a grand purpose to sustain life. So whenever Allah creates, he gives whatever he created a purpose and it is packed with life and potential. So if he's al khalik and then we say he's al mumin he's the believer, what does that mean? I'm a believer. I believe in Allah. So I believe in Allah. I believe in his message. I believe in his books. I'm a believer. I believe in what Allah willed into existence. But Allah says he's the believer. Of all the things he created, he must believe in his creation. <coughs> He believes in the power of the sun because he created the sun to do exactly what it's doing. He's the believer, then he's the one that secures what he created. See, when he created you, he secured your life. That's why we talk about Iman, we talk about faith. The Quran, all throughout the Quran, Allah addresses it more than anything else. Yeah, you are the Amanu. Yeah, you are the Amanu. Oh, you who believe. You don't progress and move in the world without belief. See, doubt holds you back. Belief means there's a sense of trust that you're moving on this idea that I believe this is possible for me. Everything you do is based on your level of belief. Whether that belief is inspiring, whether that belief is empowering, or that belief is limiting. Because some people accept beliefs that hold them back. So Allah says, He's the believer. He believes in you. I want you to understand that. Do you know that Allah believes in you? He created you. He created you and then he gave you power. He gave you purpose. He gave you will. He gave you spirit. He believes in what he put in your body. Then the question becomes, how much do we believe in what Allah gave? And how much you willing, we're willing to, through our belief, execute. It's one thing to believe, but now how are we executing that belief? Because belief changes everything. Belief will inspire you to do things unimaginable. Lack of belief will rob you of the joy of living. They just, they just don't believe. And I'm not even talking about a religious or a spiritual belief. They just have no belief. They got a bunch of fear. A bunch of doubt, hesitancy. They just don't believe. Don't believe it's possible. When I looked very, very closely at the campaign of President Barack Obama, it was three words that built momentum in that campaign. It was just three words. And when those three words were said, those three words began to build momentum. The energy, the energy came up and the people saw it's possible. We believe. After being told that it's not possible, what you can't do, somebody said, yes, we can. And when they, when they caught on the words of yes, we can, after being psychologically beat down, that no, you can't. See, that's how people get beat up. That's why they, they lack faith. They might beat them up and tell them, no, you can't do that. Shut up, sit down, be quiet. And then they begin to shrink in the face of opportunity. Then their then they faith becomes weak. That's why Allah said that you may add faith to your faith. He said even with your faith, he's going to try you. And some will fail the test. Some will succeed, some will fail. But the faith is important for progress. Without it, we're captive. Without it, we admire other people who have faith and they begin to do great things. 
mainly because they realize this idea that Allah said he created everything in the earth for you. See, there's some people who believe that. Some people believe they have been created to be the master in creation. They believe they're so much of the master of creation, they'll do some things I won't do. I've seen the guy put a, put a lion under a spell. You've seen it yourself. You got some heavy belief there. He believed that he had the power to psychologically master to some degree that big, powerful lion. He can put him under a spell. That's the power of the human being the law put on earth. Not, not only will he, will he, will he put a, a lion in the trap, but he will, he will hypnotize a bear. The law said he created everything in the creation for you. I mean, he gave you power, and you got access to utilize all of this. Even when it seemed to be overwhelming, you got power to deal with it. Faith does a great thing to you. So the guy got enough faith that, I, that I'm, I'm, I'm the master in the creation. I have psychological and spiritual power that I can put, I can tame animals. See, that's a big deal right there. Little human being, huge animal. But that little human being, but because of his faith, because of his spirit, because of his intellectual power, his psychological strength, he can tame that big lion. See, that's power. And that's assuming the position of being the ruler in the earth. And that everything is under the authority of the human being. And it's more than the authority of the human being when that human being submits his will to the will of Allah than the world works for you. The world works for you. Because the law says he is the believer. He believes in you because he said he made all of this in creation to serve you and he made you the ruler, the master, the khalifa in the earth. That's the powerful position the law gave you. But it all starts with believing that picture that Allah gave you. The picture of yourself, Allah said, he made you ruler. He made you khalifa. You're the one who come behind somebody who already showed you what's possible. See, those words, yes, we can, show people it's possible. Because people had already moved in the world and society with these limited beliefs, particularly that the African-American can't be the president of the United States. They've been beat down. Your second class is not possible. And that movement, faith, faith said, yes, we can. That's a powerful three words. Those three words right there revolutionized change in the United States of America. And that's what we had to say. I said, yes, we can. It's possible. I said, oh, you can't do what the prophet did. Well, Allah gave you that model of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa showing you what's possible for the human being. Why would Allah tell us to follow Muhammad, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa if it wasn't possible for us to do what he did? The only distinction is Muhammad, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa has the final revelation. But see, it says, if Allah is with you, can't nobody be against you. If Allah is with you. See, if Allah is not with you, who can be for you? Can't nobody be for you if Allah is against you. But Allah said that if you will aid his cause, he will aid you. And then establish your feet firm in the land. So he addresses us as, yeah, you Ladina Amanu, oh you who believe. We're talking about this ideal of a good life. We want to live a good life, and the way we live that good life is we submit our will to the will of God and we do his work. And when we do his work, he will allow us to have a good life.
وفي العاقل في حسن وإجابة So, so the Quran, the Quran is clear on guidance. It's clear on what's possible for us. Talking about the good life, you know, there's a verse in Quran where Allah says this about the good life because that's what Al Islam is. Al Islam is the good life. When we submit our will to Allah, we make the sacrifice to do his work, he said that he will reward us. And as he reward us, he allow us to live a healthy, good, productive life. Listen to this verse. Allah says, whoever does good, whether male or female, and is a believer, we shall certainly make him live a good life, and we shall certainly give them their reward for the best of what they did. See? Whoever does good, it's all about doing good. The Quran asks the question, and what is the reward of good other than good? It's all about good. It's so much about good that Prophet Muhammad said that, that Allah is good and accepts nothing but good. See, that's the good life. Allah is not accepting anything other than that which is wholesome. Other than that which helps to advance life. Decent, morality, respect, compassion, love. that's all Allah accepts. He said Allah is good and only accepts. So what you do, work hard to do good. And when you do that, male or female, see it doesn't matter, all this class, all this sexism, that's what we're talking about, how it is so important because it does away with all the sexism. The lack of respect for women They're all over the world, but particularly in America, no respect for all this uh, women's rights. You have the struggle for women to be respected as an equal with man. They're equal as a human being. But the role is totally different. Allah said he made that human being, that man. He created him in such a way that he goes out in the world and faces the challenge of the word Kawamun. He stands up for the woman. He stands up for the society. He has the one to go out there in the wilderness and make something happen. So male or female, whoever does good. It's not about your, 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 your gender. It's not about your sex. Allah is concerned about the human being. Even though Muhammad the Prophet saw this sometimes, they had to, had to, he had to elevate the status of a woman. Because somebody had told him that there's no respect, there's no dignity in the role of a woman. And the man, if he had a good baby girl, out of shame, he would bury that baby girl in the sand. See, Allah says, whoever does good, whether male or female, And is a believer, not enough to just be a male and female, but is a believer. If you do good, no matter who you are, and you believe, the result of that is, according to this verse, Allah will allow you to live a good life. Don't you want to live a good life? I don't want to live a bad life. I want to live a good life. I want to live a dignified life. I want to live a life of respect, a life, a life of giving, a life of sharing, a life of loving, a life of doing good. I want to live a good life. And the Lord tell me if I believe and just do good and help to build up society, he will allow me. That's what I want. He will allow me. He will allow you to have a good life. You believe in yourself, you believe in your role in society. You believe in the creation and all of its possibilities. And it has been created to serve good. That you live a decent lifestyle. 
and you recognize, recognize that the first law of nature is you work to preserve yourself. The first law of nature is self-preservation. Everything in creation is working to preserve itself other than the human being. The human being works hard to destroy himself. Have you ever recognized that? Have you ever seen the self-abuse in society that people are working hard to destroy the mind? Now look here, Allah made this human being so powerful. They've made all kinds of attempts to wipe themselves out. They've been abusing themselves for 30, 40 years, but Allah made this human body, this human spirit so strong, sometimes it don't work. But there's so much self-abuse. I'm not talking about other people abuse. I'm talking about self-abuse. That the first law of nature is self-preservation. Every creature other than the human being works to preserve itself. So if you want to have a good life, we got to take care of ourselves. We got to be good to ourselves. You got to work on your health. You got to work on your wealth. You got to work on your mind. You have, to, you have to wage war against the weakness in yourself. That's why when they was coming back from war, they was happy and celebrating the victory. You won the battle. No, 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 no. That's, 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 that's the minor jihad. The major jihad. Jihad al-Akbar, the major jihad, is the battle against the weakness in yourself. When you defeat that, then you're really victorious. So you got to wage war against yourself. So you can really, really, really live this good life that Allah wants us to live. Because Muhammad the Prophet said, Allah is good, and he accepts nothing but good. So whoever believes whether male or female and does good, Allah said that certainly he will make them live a good life. And then he will... Give them their reward for the best of what they did. You know, you know, you hear the word the Sully High. Well, I mean, who's Sully High? Those who believe and then they do good. See, that's the that's the constant theme in the Quran. That your belief is connected to some activity. Your belief is not just sitting by itself. Your belief is connected to what you do to help build up the human being. What you do to help build up your community, what you do to help build up your society, what you do to help build up your family. You are believing, but then that belief is inspiring you to go to work. It's not just enough to believe, that's why it's connected to belief and do good. Allah said this word is all they had. They believe, but then they work to renovate, they work to rebuild, to restructure lives. There's so many broken lives we see today. And we have a good life as our obligation to do what called those people to a good life, to a better life. Because shaitan's mission is to wipe out and destroy the human being. Don't you know that? That's why Allah tell you about intoxicants. Intoxicants and gambling. These are the tools of shaitan. You know what they do? They, they, they wipe you out. They wipe you out psychologically. They wipe you out emotionally. They wipe you out financially. And shaitan brings drugs and toxicants, whether it's alcohol, drugs, whatever it is, whatever you, whatever you sniff it, to wipe you out. To make you insensitive, cold, and coward. You don't care for other people. You're self-consumed, self-absorbed, and you don't really live a good life. So you can't live a good life when you abuse yourself psychologically. You can't live a good life when you abuse yourself emotionally. You can't live a good life. That's why I tell you about getting high. The people I've looked at over the years, abusing themselves over time. It wiped them out. It didn't wipe them out all physically. It wiped them out psychologically. It wiped them out emotionally. It, it, it just didn't feel. It just became cold. It became numb to people. I don't, even, I don't know. Can't even, things don't register anymore. Because that's the tool shaitan used to allow you not to live a good life. See, Allah wants you to live a good life. Shaitan wants you to live a bad, destructive life. I want to live a good life. So I want to follow this verse where Allah said, whoever does good, whether male or female, and is a believer, he will certainly make you live 
a good life, and then as a result of you living a good life, he shall certainly give you the reward for the best of what you did. It's about a good life. And when we submit our will to the will of Allah, we're willing to make the sacrifice. That's one of the key principles that we learn from the heart. You can't be selfish. If you really want to live a good life, you can't be selfish. You got to share. That's why Muhammad the Prophet, going back to belief in clothing, he said, none of you truly believe until you want to love for your brother and sister what you want to love for yourself. See, that's the good life. You want what you want for other people. That's good life because that means you're not self-consumed. You're not self-absorbed. You realize that you what you have, you have to share with other people. Because everything about our body is given. We breathe the air in, we give it back out. When you take the food in, you get the nutrients from the food, you release the waste. Everything is about giving. That's why Allah put all these vows where things go out. And that's really the joy of living. The joy of living is giving. And the more you give, the better you feel. So we want to help people to live a good life. You're not going to live a good life in poverty, shaitan, work to create poverty. You're not going to live a life on welfare. People are made welfare and begging a profession. They're comfortable with begging. They're comfortable with, with poverty. They're comfortable with welfare. And I remember Adam, like Muhammad said, that welfare is really saying farewell because that's what happens. You say farewell to your dignity as a man. You say farewell to your dignity as a woman. Welfare, the help and assistance, is something that you use just to get you by. But people have become permanent participants of welfare, and it has taken the productive urge out of the human being. And Muhammad the Prophet said that no descendant of Adam can enjoy a better meal than the one that he earned with his own hands. We have been created to produce. We have to go out there and till the soil and build the society that reflects what it means to be an evolved, dignified human being. Peace be unto you.